Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I welcome all of you to the class on uh, reactive intermediates. So, as uh, we were discussing the um, reactions of carbenes, so today we will be dis uh, discussing the uh, selectivity of these carbenes towards CH bonds. That which one is more reactive and uh, more blind and which one is less reactive or uh, more selective. So uh, for uh, that I have written three, I have drawn th three alkene, the three carbenes. This is one carbene, this is another one and this is the third one. Okay, so let me number it. This is one, this is two, and this is three. I have dr drawn a uh, substrate over here. So these carbenes they react differently with this substrate. Okay. And uh, uh, previously we discussed that the least selective is this one. This is more selective, and this is uh, the most selective. So. Uh, what selectivity was uh, selectivity there we studied that this one will this this methylene uh, carbene it is blind and it can be added to any of the CH bond okay now this one uh, is a little bit more uh, selective so it will go mostly to the tertiary uh, uh, it will insert itself into the tertiary CH bond mostly in majority of the cases and will produce a product in which this will uh, insert itself in between the CH bond okay that was what we discussed and then after that uh, majority of the product will be from the insertion of the CH bond because this is a tertiary carbon and this is a tertiary CH okay the third one this is even more selective so it should go uh, it should uh, produce a product in uh, which uh, the this only the molecule 3 or the carbon 3 will insert itself into the CH bond and it will produce the major product the in uh, uh, you can say that more than 80 percent of the product will be produced by the insertion of this carbon into these uh, tertiary bond okay so as in the previous uh, lecture we studied that that it inserts and little bit uh, a vague picture we showed that how it insert now today we'll be discussing that when we are when we start studying the mechanism this thing is amazing this is blind this thing is uh, a little bit okay it has some vision it can select okay this thing is much more selective but the question is why so to address that why i have to give you some examples uh, so you uh, so that we may be able uh, to understand the mechanism because uh, it's it's not the mechanism is not complicated but uh, it is very it's not that much easy uh, to understand uh, with one statement or a single statement okay it's a little bit complicated but very simple okay so let me draw something in uh, free radical sections uh, section we uh, you people have uh, might have studied that what a uh, free radical is and how it behave so we have we need to take some help uh, uh, from that one and uh, extrapolate that concept to the carbene okay suppose this is a molecule this molecule I am redrawing this molecule and as you know that this has a CH, a CH single bond okay so uh, by seeing this you, the audience or the students uh, will be uh, re will also review the free radical chemistry we'll review it uh, quite briefly 
that what how a radical substitute and how which radicals are uh, more selective okay so I'm not going into the full mechanism of that but uh, let me draw something suppose this is a bromine radical okay now as you know that at low temperature this bromine radical uh, is much more selective how what is the selectivity it will go and abstract the tertiary hydrogen CH this tertiary hydrogen uh, hydrogen attached to a tertiary carbon atom and not the secondary and no, uh, not the primary one <laughs> so it is more selective in the major product it will abstract this why it will be clear in a moment okay suppose this is the free radical now okay bromine uh, we, we don't know how it is formed suppose okay but somehow a bromide radical came here and it came to the stage of the scene and you just place it in this substrate because our aim is to understand that why those things are most selective in their nature okay and also stereospecific so we are just uh, doing this to understand the selectivity and the specificity of those things okay the order so this react with this radical okay because this bond has two electrons in it as you know so one of the electrons re react with this bromine and the bromine and hydrogen bond is formed as you see that here the bond is broken because this is a carbon tertiary carbon and now this electron will sit on the this carbon atom okay in the product so it will happen we should have this product okay now this hydrogen is gone you, because we have a H B bond is produced okay but along with this here on this carbon a free radical appears okay this is good that a free radical appear and if we have some other radical uh, let's suppose another bromine radical is there so uh, it will react with this thing and can recombine with it okay if we have suppose because it's not uh, in the scope of this section because it is concerning the free radical you should uh, not uh, worry uh, you don't worry about that where that radical came okay suppose we have two radical you just put one radical it's not uh, that simple that to put some radical in a flask etc let's suppose or assume that we place uh, one radical into a uh, uh, contender in which this thing was present and it quickly came and abstracted the tertiary ch okay the carbon the, the hydrogen atom from the tertiary carbon and these are the hook arrows okay because they represent they represent one electron movement so one electron is uh, well, this is one electron this is other electron and this has two electrons this one has two electrons okay so this is produced now one electron because is left on the carbon this just sits on the carbon okay now uh, again suppose you place some other radical into this container after some time how don't worry about the how right now okay and what will it do this is the radical suppose we have another radical bromine radical say let's for sake of understanding this bromine radical okay another bromine radical you have and you just injected that into the flask so it is not possible to inject some radical but say let's say for sake of understanding that uh, we injected uh, another bromine so it will quickly combine with the bromine okay or oh, with this carbon radical this is and this thing now a bond between these two will be produced formed and another bromine will uh, make uh, and, uh, this molecule will be produced okay 
this molecule is uh, produced. Now here I have to write bromine. Okay, so what happens? You have some two bromine radical, and what was uh, what happened? A reaction occurs. One hydrogen was abstracted, but that hydrogen which was present, which was sitting on the three degree carbon, tertiary carbon, and it produced a tertiary radical. And as you know that the tertiary radical is more stable, okay? So that's why it's formed. This is more stable radical, and it is produced. So the bromine then recombine the bromine, another bromine radical which you have injected, just uh, combined, recombine itself with the, this radical and a molecule is produced. So the what is the net reaction? The net reaction is let like this, this is the same substrate I think, okay. You just placed, um, suppose, two bromine radical, okay. Or bromide radical, bromine radical, okay, and you get a product. What product? This product. Now it will be clear this bromine, okay, but the major product is this one. So it seems that the bromine is more selective. It just uh, underwent or it just abstracted or attacked the hydrogen which is present on the tertiary in carbon. And uh, that's what we say or what uh, scientists say that the tertiary radical is more stable. And you might have studied it uh, in your previous classes or in your uh, basic courses that the tertiary radical is more stable okay so this is a tertiary radical and now bromine combines and it is produced and how i am going to connect this thing with that okay because it's we are doing it for some uh, no for not for fun but to make us understand that how those think or produce a clear picture that why those are more selective this is less select selective okay and how carbene will react so this is the thing which uh, is now right a uh, little bit clear okay now let's move to another concept which is called as a now chirality now, why I'm going to the chirality? Because we have some stereospecificity which we need to address in this reaction. They are stereoselective. It means that they will, they, they, these two, they have goes for the tertiary CH. And they are stereospecific. Now, the, how they attack a stereospecifically, you will see it, okay. The stereoselectivity and the stereospecificity, you will understand. Suppose, you have, uh, as you know, that let me write it uh, for a sake of understanding. Suppose you have a carbon and it has four uh, things attached to it. Okay, this is one, this is two. Suppose this is something A, this is B. This thing, hash is C. It's not a carbon, so we should write it as a D some D, not deuterium, and this toward you, we should write it as E, okay? So from your basic chemistry, or basic, uh, from, uh, from your previous knowledge, you know that this carbon is chiral, okay? Because it has some four different substituents attached to it. Now, what stereospecificity uh, does with uh, what is uh, how do we connect it with the stereospecificity? Stereospecificity, it will be clear in a moment. Okay, let's suppose that this one, suppose this E, suppose is a hydrogen. Okay, a uh -huh. hydrogen. Now, uh, uh, if you have again, think for a bromine radical. Okay, uh, you if we have bromine radical present 
what will it do some bromine radical or any other radical because you will uh, know uh, after some time it will attack this hydrogen okay and the other electron will sit on the carbon it's I'm just repeating the previous uh, example a little bit but in a new way okay so what is produced a right a here or write your B on the plan of the boat in this same plan uh, let me write it D in that same plan and H is gone okay now a radical appear here above the H you have a uh, radical is produced but when the radical is produced now this thing uh, this carbon will acquire some uh, sp squared or sp2 uh, type of hybridization character okay now it will become a, some sort of sp squared hybridized and a p orbital uh, will appear on it okay it, it's concerning the basic course so i'm not going into the more detail of that so now what will happen this molecule will become a sort of planar okay from a planar i mean that it will lose uh, it will become it like this okay c a b suppose i write it like d here yeah? and now a p orbital will uh, appear okay so how would the p orbital half the uh, the radical will be present in a p orbital or some sort of um, sp uh, sorry in some sort of uh, uh, sp squared orbital but let's uh, for a sake of understanding it will be in the p orbital okay so if it is in the p orbital now what will happen okay the radical is present uh, half the p orbital is toward you the dumbbell this is the dumbbell okay half the dumbbell is toward us and half is on the back side okay of the board this is toward us toward you and this is toward me so if we write it like here the p orbital will be here okay i want to write the p orbital here suppose i write it 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 i could write it a little better like this okay i messed up the board suppose this is the toward us and that is toward the base okay this this is the p orbital like this this portion is behind the board and this is in front of the board so and radical is present here okay suppose now so the radical can tunnel to here and there okay it might be present here or here okay so the bromine when it attack it this molecule it can attack it from this back side or from the front side suppose now what will happen so you will have two products okay one is this a and this is the b let's suppose the d comes on its place and hydro the bromine and if another bromine attack this thing okay one bromine created the radical and the other bromine suppose we have another bromine radical they just join uh, itself together with this it produced this okay but as you know this is planar so it can be attacked from the back side you will get another product also now this time bromine is here and deuterium will be here oh, sorry and the d is here now what is what happens the stereochemistry of this carbon just mess up it produced two uh, nn tumors and uh, so uh, you, you can say that uh, uh, this carbon when this reactant was reacted it produced these two products and in which the stereochemistry is not like the pro, uh, not like that one okay because if it were stereospecific then only this product would have formed this hydrogen would have gone and this would have formed okay 
Now, here, okay, this one, this is one product, and in other product, the bromine is attached itself on the back side, just because you have this intermediate. It is a planner. It has a lobe, the P lobe in front. When it this side is attacked, the deuterium, sorry, the D will be on the back side. This is any sort of group, okay. And if from that behind side it is attacked, the D will come out uh, here, okay. You can write it here too. It's not no problem. You can write it like this, or you can also write it like this. Okay, this is your D. Now this is your bromine. Okay, don't confuse yourself. This B and this is Br. Okay, so this is a product which is found. Now I am going to connect it with the carbene selectivity. What we are studying, we just want to understand that why those things are more selective, and. Uh, Stereochemistry on the carbon was scrambled. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, extrapolate that thing a little bit more. Okay. If you have this thing, this molecule. Now I'm writing a simple molecule like this one. Okay. I should write a little bit bigger. These are CH. This is CH3 and this is ethyl group. This is propyl. So this carbon is now a chiral carbon because it has four different groups. Because this is one, two, three, three carbon thing, propane. This is two carbon thing, ethane. This is one carbon thing. It is uh, a methane. Sorry, ethyl group, propyl group, and this is methane, methane or methyl group. Okay, okay. And now you have <coughs> on the back side, a hydrogen is there. Suppose again we come for our you know, reaction. Uh, free radical pipe of reaction. Suppose you heat it, uh, uh, so if you uh, splash some light on it and add bromine at very, very low temperature, you will get one major product. This, uh, you, what you will get, okay, you will get one major product. This tertiary CH bond will be, uh, the, the bromine will be attached to this carbon. As you saw, in the previous example, that first one bromine molecule will come and it will abstract the hydrogen from that, and then the other bromine will just uh, uh, bromine radical will attach itself with the uh, carbon radical which was produced. Okay, <coughs> so the product you will get will be like this. Okay, this is the same thing. And say this is or bromine plus this thing. Now this is or bromine, and on the back we have the methyl group. This is methyl, okay? C3. You can write it as a methyl or just uh, 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 stay, uh, keep it as a hash line. Suppose I write this, this is methyl, this is methyl, okay. This is methyl for sake of understanding, okay. This carbon is attached to methyl or this is methyl. But again, you have two products produced. Again, we will be going to those things, okay. And this is our target. So, when radical is involved and the radical is a little bit selective, Okay, that's good. It can go to tertiary carbon. It can replace. And what we said, we just said that this methyl, this thing, this thing is uh, very much uh, uh, blind. It can go for every carbon. If suppose assume this carbon insert itself here, here, or here, or in any of the CH bonds, this one can insert. This carbon can insert itself in a little bit more in the tertiary carbon tertiary CH bond and this one almost in a tertiary carbon but it's carbene and we are I am giving you an example of a free radical you will understand it within a uh, uh, couple of minutes or three or five minutes okay <coughs> now so this thing we understand that we you will get two product the stereochemistry in this thing will be disrupted or disturbed okay so now coming to another thing, okay. So, uh, 
let me show you one thing that the ground state of these carbene is uh, most of these carbenes are triplet state okay and uh, we mentioned that the triplet carbenes are almost like a di radical or bi radical this is a triplet carbene okay it will behave like radical because it is in some other orbital that thing is in another orbital if it reacts with anything it should uh, react like this thing or like this bromine suppose we assume that let's replace the bromine with this uh, radical so the first the first what will happen this thing will come I'm sorry suppose pardon me if I write it wrong okay this is the hydrogen okay let's suppose this is a triplet carbene okay because the ground state of this carbene is triplet okay if this was a triplet yes as we know that it will attack uh, it should attack the triple uh, uh, tertiary CH bond okay this is the tertiary CH bond it should attack it like uh, sorry uh, yeah it will attack it like this so what will be created suppose it will create uh, a bond with uh, it, uh, what will happen it now this carbene will be uh, will form a bond here okay now I am writing this thing as this okay and suppose this is uh, deuterated or some carbene like two deuteriums to distinguish it from this thing okay now you will have another this carbene insert itself in place of that and it will be like C D 2 H okay it, sh it should be like this but uh, what would have, have what uh, and it should produce another product like this okay let me for uh, saving the time I should have it. this is the other one now this is C D 2 H this is C this is D this is H D 2 H and now on the back side is or methyl group okay these two products are would be produced from a triple car triplet uh, carbene okay it will insert itself in the this CH bond how as you know that just like a bromine mechanism I should write it a little bit faster this is the the DD okay now this thing is the carbene and it, what will uh, it do it should it will quickly it will quickly extract this hydrogen okay now this is a carbene this is one electron of the car carbene and this is the other sorry electron and it just extracted this one and this will sit here okay on the carbon so what will happen you will get C H D B and a free radical okay so with one of free radical this radical reacts suppose we have this carbon remaining plus what plus uh, you have you should have this species okay now this become planar and this will become a radical okay so now this carbene can join this molecule from back side when it uh, come from the uh, back side what will happen this uh, methyl will be on this side and this deuterated carbene will attach uh, uh, itself in the uh, back side okay when it come from when this carb uh, come from this side now the CD2 will be uh, toward you this is bold and that's hash and the CH3 will go behind the seal or uh, behind the bolt okay or it, it can be created so this this is one thing in which uh, we need to appreciate it so these were the two products
but there was a